Hi, I'm Sharmila, and I'll be traveling to Amsterdam, Netherlands to do my master's in finance. Hi, I'm Stanley, and I'll be traveling to USA to do my master's in computer science. Number one point of concern for students going abroad is accommodation. Where will I live? Whom will I live with? How do I book the space that I want to live in? Well, in most European countries, especially, you know, Netherlands, Sweden, Finland, those kind of places, the university tends to pre-book certain apartments, which then they will hand out to you on a first-come, first-serve basis. Um, now, you want to check these places and, you know, usually they tend to be very cheap than the going rate and not just cheap. What they do offer is this whole combination of package where you not just get uh, space for yourself, but you also get all the utilities, which is gas, electricity, uh, in internet and water so you want to go for those uh, accommodations which are pre-booked by the university now bear in mind that this culture tends to only prevail in the in Europe and not in United States and Australia and those different places I think US Stanley would be able to explain a lot better now in US what happens is there's a different kind of culture where the seniors actually help you with the accommodation for example if you're going to university x you go into the groups and you uh, inform the seniors of your arrival on which date you're arriving in the u.s they would uh, they would actually take care of all the travel for example they will pick you up from your airport and they will drop you to your accommodation and if you don't have any accommodation they'll help you to stay with them for say 10 to 15 days until you find accommodation i okay. think this is a culture which is really friendly and that's what i like about the u.s right and uh, one important point on accommodation is that especially if you're going to certain European nations, they do offer allowances for students who are below an income threshold. So if you're going there and not uh, thinking about working part time, I think most, uh, a lot of the rich European nations especially, uh, you know, they tend to offer allowances to up to say 150 euros a month that they will pay for students and you know, for, to that extent you will find your accommodation cheaper. So a couple of things I'm doing which are really important, buy a really good backpack, a really solid sturdy backpack because you're going to be walking around a lot with your laptop and lots of these books. So um, I've been using a Swiss gear backpack, that's the brand name. Um, it's really really sturdy, it has a good laptop compartment and uh, yeah, it, it does everything you need. So now here are a few techie things which you should do with your computer. Um, I think it's important to put pictures and music into a hard drive so that you can bring it to the US into your new laptop or computer and you can still have all your stuff. If you have a few documents and stuff that you don't want to put in your hard drive that you need quick access to from your phone or tablet, I think it's best to put it on a cloud service like Dropbox or Google Drive or maybe iCloud so you can have access to it from anywhere, maybe even in the airport. Keep a list of your passwords because I think that's important. People forget it all the time and uh, you're going to get, you have to sign up for more and more things now as you're in college. Another thing is I have a list of programs on my current laptop that I use frequently like iTunes or Microsoft Word and all that. So when I get a new laptop, I can quickly reinstall them without having to try and remember what everything was. So that's really important. And I think the last thing is which I'm currently doing right now, signing out from all my devices at home. So if you have a tablet or a laptop that you're sharing with your you know, brother, sister, or a shared computer, sign out from all your stuff so that they don't have access to your things. So our top three tips for students who are going abroad, uh, any country for pursuing their further studies. My first uh, personal tip would be to network a lot. Um, Indian students generally tend to be, you know, to themselves or in their cliques when they go abroad. But I would say go out, all out on networking. Um, find out people who work in organizations where you wish to work in. Find out the different connections from your industry. This is your network that you will have throughout your career. So build relationships, build a good impression. Uh, make friends with them on LinkedIn, Facebook, WhatsApp, whichever social network you find. Actually, Facebook is your great friend when actually you come to this because when you go to US, what happens is you don't know whom you will be living with. So when you go to Facebook, for some people you get an admission into University X, you go to Facebook and find out University X group, and then you can actually find out the roommate who you want, the preference, veg or non veg and many other requirements that you'd like. And once you find your respective groups, then you can actually go to WhatsApp and find, make your uh, groups in WhatsApp. Yeah. So accordingly, you plan out and find your roommates. That's the first thing I would like to tell you. Yeah, I found my roommate on Facebook, you know, she's from China and the only way we can talk is actually on Gmail and Facebook, so. 
The second thing which I would like to say is very important because you need to make a checklist of what you are actually going to take. Because you are not going for one or two years, you are going for two consecutive years. So when you go, what you have to do is make a checklist of what you need, especially if you are going to a country which has a different language as your take cold. You need to take the required uh, materials, for example, you need to have thermals or you need to take um, winter jackets. And accordingly decide what you need to take. Uh, if you're going in groups, if you have already four five rooms, all you can do is um, one person gets one material, second person gets second material, and accordingly you all can live in harmony. Yeah, I, I guess it depends on the relationship you share with uh, the people that you'll be living with. You know, like I don't have to take all the kitchenware. You know, my roommate will get some, I will get some. So in that sense, I would like to add is travel smart. You know, there is always a trade-off between the things that you will need over there as well as, you know, stuff that you might just get very easily and cheaply over there. The third tip that I would like to say is you're going to a new country, new culture, so explore. Explore away, travel as much as you can, take every opportunity to see new lands, meet new people, try different cuisines and think about different ways of life because, you know, the well that you've been living in right now may not be the well that you go to. So you want to adjust to the new life, at the same time you want to explore all that the world has to offer to you. Speaking of this topic, I would like to say when you travel, you would require a traveler's check because you would want to deposit certain amount of money when you open a new bank account over there. So, especially when you want to pay your first month's rent or your second month's rent, or if you need to buy a new phone, or if you need to buy, say, a cycle for travel purposes, you require money which may not be immediately available. So, traveler's check is the easiest way to carry money around. Secondly, I would like to say what you would like to carry is your I-20 or your visa. Do not forget that your passport and your essentials. So, while traveling and depending on your luggage, what your flight requires you to, that is 23 kilos into two luggages and varies according to flight. So, keeping these in mind, travel smart. I, to add to that, I think uh, another great option that most banks have come up with nowadays is uh, you have these forex cards. Well, the basic principle is that you want to cut down commission costs and the forex fluctuations as much as possible. So if you get a good deal and a good rate, like for example, if the forex rates are really down today, I would say lock in that rate, go ahead for your cards or your traveler's checks and you're good to go. So here are my three tips that I think you'll need. Um, the first thing is go around your house look at every inch of your house and see if you're missing anything you know whatever it is something small or uh, you know big I mean just go look everywhere because you never know what you're missing um, the second thing is bring some mementos you know of your family you know bring something that maybe your mom gave you on your birthday or something or you know a picture or something even if it's digital put it on your phone so because I mean you're gonna feel really homesick <laughs> so that's important and um, I think the last thing is just relax, you know, I mean, there's going to be lots of people uh, coming from other countries, just like you. Um, I'm sure you'll find other, you know, Desi people. Uh, and even other than that, even the people who are from the U.S., they're really awesome, trust me, I know. Um, everyone's really chill, you know. So, don't worry about it, just relax, have fun. And yeah, that's it.